Hi again. So this is the last video in this series in the differences between emotional self-management and emotional development. So far, we've reviewed the benefits of emotional self-regulation, and I shared some of the signs that can indicate that it may be time to take that extra step to refine and differentiate your emotional response. So now that I've got you all mulling over those concepts, let's keep going and talk about what that extra step really looks like. Meaning, what would it entail if you did decide to move beyond regulating your emotions and actually worked on developing your emotional state as well? So let's dive in. So let me start by saying that there are many strategies, styles, languages, and techniques out there that describe and can take you through a foundational emotional development process. And there are different parts of the process that clinicians with different backgrounds will address with different tools. For example, there's cognitive and dialectical behavior therapy, somatic processing, 12-step programs, shamanism, energy healing and tapping. There's EMDR, hypnosis, inner child work, parts therapy and coherence work, and even the simple reconditioning, strengthening and whole brain development that the Human Infusion Project teaches. Those are all examples of the many names, tools and techniques that different educators or practitioners use to guide you in getting what I sense most of us are looking for, which is basically long-term relief from internal conflict, more commonly known as inner peace, and a mental emotional state that is consistent, enjoyable, and reliable. In other words, we all want mental relief supported by a calm, reliable emotional state that can support whatever life we want to lead. Yet at the moment, to get that, you may have to combine the skills of a couple of practitioners in order to cover everything that's needed. I mean, it's understandable. People tend to specialize in the one tool, strategy, or management technique that gave them relief. Gratefully, that's rapidly evolving as more and more clinicians are rounding out their practices. I mean, I see more and more traditional therapists expanding their skills to include areas such as attachment neurobiology, coaching, somatic healing, and hypnosis. And I see more and more life coaches and mental wellness practitioners taking the time to expand their knowledge in areas like brain and body science, trauma recovery, human psychology, and even spiritual ideology. But in the meantime, you may have to simply try out an approach that resonates or makes sense to you and see how it helps. Then if it doesn't quite cover what you need, keep using what works while learning from someone else. I mean, that's pretty much what I did. I pieced it together from several sources, customizing it for myself along the way. Yet, despite trying out all those different tools and approaches, over the course of my education, through studying other people with long lasting life change success, and looking back at my own therapy and personal trial and error, I found that any long term systemic level process that aims to develop the emotional response system itself includes not only teaching healthy coping skills or emotional self management practices but also teaching the skills, tools, and practices that address three big areas. They identify, challenge, and diversify some of our unconscious thinking patterns. They refine and differentiate the body's stress response so it aligns with their current environment. And they strengthen the brain as a whole. Working in these three areas has both personal and relational benefits because it not only manages the emotional activation state that you currently have, but it also develops it more fully. As you work through your thinking and belief patterns, and as you develop lesser used brain areas and raise your emotional activation threshold so it doesn't fire up as intensely or as quickly, 
your default emotional state becomes more centered. The need to self-regulate or manage our emotion slowly decreases. Our relational competence increases and that mystical work-life balance thing that we're all seeking, well, it becomes a lot easier to obtain. If you'd like more details about what each of those three categories include, check out the blog post on the Human Infusion Project website titled Moving Beyond Self-Regulation. But I don't want this video to be too long because I know we all have limited attention these days. So another question I get asked is why don't more practitioners tell you all this detail? Well, I can't say for sure, but here's a few of my guesses. First, the pace of our learning is so rapid now. Maybe it's just hard to keep up with everything. I mean, ever since advances in technology allowed us to look into our brain, our growth and understanding has really surged in the last few decades. I mean, I'm still catching up myself. Second, as I mentioned earlier, even skilled practitioners and therapists can get relief for a long time from using management or regulation strategies. So that's what they understandably teach to others. Plus, it's only been recently that this knowledge has been shared in sort of regular person language. It just sometimes takes a while for overly academic language to become sort of water cooler conversation. I mean, that's part of why I do what I do here. <laughs> I want to simplify this stuff so it's easier to talk about. But if I'm to be completely honest, another reason why we're not told a lot of these details is because in the fast paced world that we live and work in, most of us focus on fast results and efficiency. So a lot of us are convinced that we just don't have the time, which means that we look for quick fixes or temporary relief instead of lasting and transferable change and development. I mean, the fact that the personal growth industry makes billions of dollars from selling quick fix management strategies supports that. So I hope they're working, especially if you paid heavily for it. But if you really think about it, we also waste a lot of time. We waste time in worry. We waste time recovering from exhaustion or redoing tasks because we're so distracted, stressed out, or we can't focus. Not to mention that we waste time spent on illness, zoning out on TV, or recovering from burnout or relational breakups. So. I'm sorry to be blunt, but we have the time. It's a matter of how we use it. So that's also why I'm not shy about sharing honestly what I believe it takes to develop a stable, sustainable, transferable emotional state. And I also believe that most people are smarter than they give themselves credit for. I mean, if you're watching this series, that tells me that you're obviously someone who takes their well-being and relationships seriously. And as I see it, people with that combination are very capable of doing hard things and succeeding at challenges. So I'm not going to stop short by only sharing the quick fixes that have worked for me. I share more because I know people are capable of doing more. And when someone is ready and willing, that capability is what will get the sustainable, integrative, and transferable results that so many of us are really looking for, whether we realize it or not. In other words, I'm not someone who's gonna treat you with kid gloves or package the realities of growth work in a lot of fluff. I'm compassionate. And I'm also talking to you like the smart, capable adult that you are, playing a hunch that deep down, you really do care about your well-being and your relationships. So that's why I give it to you as simply, but as straightforwardly as I can. So I hope this video series has you at least considering the options we all have for working with things like anxiety, emotional unrest, or inconsistent outcomes of any kind. And for any of you whose spiritual development is just as important as their emotional development, I'm with you and agree. We are definitely energetic, beautiful beings at our core. 
Yet we also can't forget that we are encased in this flesh and blood body. And I found that by starting with what's already familiar to me and by getting this neurophysiological piece sort of dialed in and working closer to its design, I found that my ability to access that other part of my life experience, well, it's only getting better. So whether you choose to manage or develop your life and emotional experience, it's really a personal choice. And I understand firsthand that sometimes we have to run something to the ground or it has to just stop working or stop working consistently and really interfere with getting what we do want before we seriously consider doing additional work or more specific work and doing that work consistently. I get it. However, if you're at that point or getting close to it, start looking for support in the areas that I mentioned earlier by looking into therapists, coaches, or practitioners who resonate with you, that you personally connect with, and who are living and experiencing the results that you want for yourself. There's no wrong place to begin. Just begin. And if that includes my own style and my more simplistic strengthening and reconditioning approach, please stay connected to our community. You're always welcome here. To answer a few questions that I got um, this past week, I am in the process of finishing up the last class in our series, an easy to implement guide of sorts that will include all the research supported strategies that I've used to develop my own emotional response, to overcome high functioning anxiety, to widen my range of enjoyable emotion, and that I use to revitalize my own marriage and enrich my relationships across many sectors. I'll tell you up front that the way I teach is straightforward and not overly complex. So if you're someone who prefers a more flashy, intricate program or something with a lot of high dollar bells and whistles, <laughs> you won't find that here. I figure our time is valuable, so I just give it to you as simply and straightforwardly as I can. And of course, like all of our other classes, this last class will be affordable and support our annual grant. So if any of that interests you, please check out our five foundational classes on the Human Infusion Project website. I created these classes for you to not only show you some new self-management strategies to add to your collection, but to set you up with the foundational knowledge and the preliminary self-discovery answers that you're going to use in longer-term development process that the last class will describe. So feel free to use those classes. You can even use them to complement any therapeutic work that you're already doing, or you can use them to get ready and set yourself up for success in our program. I look forward to seeing you in class.